guests. We have the privilege of having Representative Lauren Underwood join us, um, and she is she'll be in a brief Q and A um, with our Minnesota fellow Rayi Jassasi. Um, and so I will invite them both to hop on. Hello, Representative Underwood. Hi, I'm so glad to be with you today. Oh, we are so excited to have you. We're just getting Rai on, um, and we've collected questions from our social media for the past two weeks that we are going to um, chat with you about. So we are sure. super, super grateful to have you on. I know schedules are crazy busy. Rai, are you good? And I will take my little circle face off here. Hi, Ryan. Nice to meet you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so exciting to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to jump right into questions because I'm sure a lot of people here are ready to hear from you. Um, my very first question is, why is voting in this election important? And like specifically, like, how does it connect to issues that some young women may carry, uh, care about or the Supreme Court or even the census? Could you like give us some context around why this specific election is important? So literally everything is on the ballot in this election. Your health care is on the ballot in this election. Your reproductive rights are on the ballot in this election. Climate change and being able to save our planet from this existential threat is on the ballot in this election. I mean, protecting all of our communities, our friends and our schools from this escalating threat of gun violence is on the ballot in this election. So many people talk about that as if it's just the presidential race, but it's the presidential race. It's the Senate. It's the United States Congress. It's your county board, your state reps, right? Who represents you at every level of government is literally up to you with this election. And so November 3rd is coming up quickly, ladies. I mean, for real. And we have like, what, five months to do all this work, probably less than that, uh, to do all this work to make sure that we don't just show up in big numbers, but literally all of our girlfriends go out and vote. We have the power to change the outcome of this election. Literally, president all the way down and then flip over your ballot. We can be the ones to choose who gets voted in. And then we have the power to hold them accountable to make sure that they are serving our interests. There's so much at stake. I don't know how anybody could not vote, seriously. Thank you. Oh my God. I love the part where you're like, grab your girls and vote. I think that's something that I've been trying to talk about because voting can be fun. Um, one thing I do want to hit though, I know a lot of young people that I talk to feel very discouraged and almost disillusioned by the entire political process. I hear you. What, what are your words of encouragement for youth to vote who feel like the political process, even when they do participate, hasn't delivered on their needs? Okay, so at like a basic level, what I've gotten from young people in my community, and I represent a district in Northern Illinois, what I've gotten is that they think that like registering to vote and going to vote is like going to the DMV. Just like needlessly complicated and bureaucratic and takes too long and you're standing in line and you know who has time for that right like i hear you but when properly done voting does not have to be like that you have vote early vote options in many states and we're trying to make sure that it happens in all states why because we have a pandemic and it's not safe to stand in close quarters with other people for an extended period of time in my state you can go online like starting august 1st and request your ballot by mail and you can just vote at home and you and your girls can get together <laughs> and have a little fun night, a little kiki and fill out your ballots, right? Like this is something that voting should be safe. It should be easy. Um, and there should not be barriers between you and the ballot box. So, you know, I, I know that there is this perception that it's, needlessly complicated. Um, but one, it's too important to skip over because we're too busy, right? Like we're all very busy, but this is something that's important for our lives, for our communities, for our family and for our country. Mm -hmm. Very true, thank you. Um, on that note, what are some of the reasons that made you go out to vote as a young person? Well, I, the first time I voted, I wanted to see what it was about. You know, it just felt like such an adult thing to do. And it was, um, I believe, a presidential year. And so um, I, had a, I had feelings about who should be the president. Um, and I wanted to 
make sure that they heard my perspective. I, as, if you can't tell, I am an opinionated young woman. <laughs> I don't always wait my turn in line. I wouldn't be in Congress if I followed everybody else's rules uh, for my life. I'm 33. And, you know, I thought that there needed to be some changes. And that was one tool that was available to me to make the changes that I wanted to see in my community. And so I went and voted. And it was great. I love that. Okay. Um, okay. So what's like your call to action for the young people on this call who you may be, maybe not that opinionated, but have really deep feelings about the issues that they care about, like healthcare yes. is an issue for them, voting, climate change, all of these things are super important to them. What's your one call to, or few call to action for them? Yes, okay, so a few things. One, um, I want you to go on your phone and pull up November 3rd and put an all day appointment on your calendar and it just needs to say vote and set your notification, okay? None of this like silence your notification. Two, you can go online and um, find out who's on your ballot. So there's places like vote.org if you wanna make sure you're registered to vote. Then you can go to a site like ballotready.org to see who's all on your ballot and literally find out about these people. Because I know it feels like, well, I know about the presidential race, but I don't know anything about, you know, circuit clerk of my county. How am I gonna pick who to vote for there. Well, you can literally figure out who's on the ballot and start Googling those people right now. And you have enough time right now to start asking them questions. If there's something, if they don't have a website or if there's nothing on that website that speaks to you, right? You can actually go and meet these people. I mean, these people want to talk to you. They will make time for you. And so you could reach out and ask all your questions. That's my call to action, right? Don't wait. Don't sit out, don't self-select out, don't give other people the power over your body, over yourself, over your life, and over your community. You have the power, ladies. Do not cede it to other people. I love that. Um, thank you so much. If you have you. time, I do have a couple more questions in the chat. Okay. Um, okay, so one of the questions is, how can we motivate people who serve in office to meet with young people. I see a problem with politicians dismissing young people as not interested in politics. Yes, okay, so sometimes it has to do with uh, like how you reach out, right? So like tweeting at somebody is not the same as like requesting a meeting. All you have to do is just like Google their name, right? So if you Google me, Lauren Underwood, you see like my official office. We have a phone number, call the office and say, I wanna meet and I'll say, okay. And then we get a meeting and I love meeting people. And most, most elected officials are like that. Um, everybody's not, but you can tell pretty quickly, right? Who's serious about engaging you, who's real and who's authentic and who's not. Um, but I would say, you know, tweeting at, um, you know, DMing, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or something like that is not the most effective way to um, raise like a legitimate concern that you are soliciting a response to, right? So if you just want like everybody else to see what you're talking about, like go for it. But if you really want to meet or you really want a response, right, call them, ask for a meeting. Thank you so much. That was a popular question. I just wanted to get it in there. Um, on the note about voting, Ignite will actually be launching this thing called Sophia, Sophia the Bot. And it's a program, it's an online program that's going to help every young person all across the country to register to vote. All Amazing. they have to do is fill it out. It'll email them a personal voting plan. We'll be launching it today. So um, thank you for your uh, your words of encouragement. I think a lot of young people find that very, very important in this time. Thank you for serving us in Congress. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing your voice, your opinions. I know people like me look up to you and I'm sure several others do too. Thank well, you. We need y'all in Congress. Come on, ladies. Hope to see you on <laughs> Capitol Hill or throughout the community. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Representative Underwood.